what mobility do you need for the single leg Romanian deadlift or the single leg RDL? What we're going to do in this tutorial is quickly talk through the exercise, but then mostly look at the, the muscles that we need to focus on or the positions that we need to get into to stretch the areas that need to be lengthened to be able to get proper mobility through the single leg RDL. If you want to improve your mobility, hit the link below, go through to my how to improve mobility workshop, where you'll come to see me at the gym for two hours, we'll go through full consultation, assessment, and then start putting together an initial program to start improving your mobility wherever you need it. The single leg RDL is an exercise that works the posterior chain, if you will, so the glutes, you'll get aspects of the hamstrings in there, you'll get parts of the adductor in there, plus you'll get elements of the back working as well, depending on how and what weights you use. So what we need to be able to do first is first of all, understand the exercise. So if I just do the movement, I'm stood up, I extend my hip and then I hinge forward and that's my single leg RDL. So, and then we come back to the starting position and that's basically our movement. Going hips back, hips forward with the body coming forward. So with regards to mobility, what are the muscles or what are the areas of the body that we're talking about that need to be lengthened? The first muscle group that we're going to talk about are the hamstrings. Now what we have to understand about the hamstrings are the origin and the insertion, which is basically where the muscle joins. So the muscle joins at the back of the knee here, and it also joins on what is called the ischium or the sit bones of your pelvis. So the little rings that are on the bottom of the pelvis um, and what we're essentially doing, when we look at the movement, what we're doing is you've got the ischium, which is sort of tucked under here, and that is moving away from my knee. So that muscle is lengthening. So we need to get length through the hamstring. Now, when we get length through the hamstring, there's a few ways that we can get it. We can do normal sort of hamstring stretches, but again, I try to keep it as sort of functional as I can or as realistic as I can. Now obviously we're talking about the standing leg because when, when we're on the standing leg, it's that hamstring that's lengthening. So this, the leg here, the leg that's up, the hamstring's staying the same because it's staying in line with the pelvis. But when we come onto here, this is lengthening. Only by a few centimeters, but it's lengthening. Now, one of the ways we can do it is get it to tension and then essentially just rock back into here. So we're essentially in a splits type position. And then what that will do is allow us to nudge forward or nudge back and lengthen through the hamstring. So we could do it in this position. So again, we're lengthening what would be the standing leg. So that would be the standing leg. So if I just come back and then place, I'm now lengthening right through my hamstring. So I can now feel that. So I've got my whole body in position as if I was in a single leg RDL. But what I'm now starting to do, again, if you want to straighten the knee, you want to bend the knee a little bit, and then you can start to lengthen through there. And then again, you can just take it further by just taking that back leg back, bringing the body over. And then essentially all you're doing is you're going onto both feet, but doing a single leg RDL and coming over that much further, but feeling the stretch through the hamstring. Muscle number two is the adductor group. Now, the adductor group is one that generally gets missed, but the adductor group goes right from the knee and again, joins onto the pelvis, but this time it joins onto the pubis. So the pubis is a little bit more into the middle of the pelvis, but again, it's still got to tilt and again, the, um, the origin has got to move away from the insertion. So we come over, and again, we're lengthening not only through the hamstring, but we're also lengthening through the adductor. Now, the stretch that we did for the, um, for the hamstrings will do elements of the adductors, but if we want to isolate the adductors off a little bit more and generate a little bit more length through them, we would just come down onto one knee, and hold this position. And again, you'll feel it right up through the inside of the leg. You may even feel it going up right into the, into the pelvis and onto the pubis. So again, we've got that stretch there, which is gonna be lengthening through the hamstring, uh, sorry, lengthening through the adductors, 
mainly adductor magnus at the top, but you will feel it through the other adductors there. And again, although it's not a replicating the movement of it, you are replicating, um, not necessarily replicating, but you are lengthening the muscle, which is again, when you come back into this position, is gonna help with that range of movement. So we've done the hamstring and we've now done the adductor. Muscle number three are the posterior fibers to glute medius. Now, glute medius is a muscle that comes off of the, um, off of the femur, the neck of the femur, and goes up, certainly posterior fibers, they go up onto the back of the pelvis. Now again, if we look at the movement, and if we look at the distance, that's got to lengthen, it will change sort of angle slightly, but essentially the posterior fibers have got to lengthen through glute medius. So what we need to be able to do is get into glute medius and access it, stretch it out. So that would be coming into this sort of position. You can come onto a bench and you could do it in a raised position, but you can get into here and then you can turn, rotate the body, turn the pelvis, and then you'll get a little bit more into glute medius. Again, lengthening out that muscle, which is then only gonna assist the hamstring and the adductor. And as you start bringing all these together, you're gonna to get that much more from the, um, from the exercise and from the mobility that you're doing. Because if you try it to start with, so try the single leg RDL, go through all of this stretching and all of this mobility, and then go back into the RDL, it will feel completely different. Final exercise is the psoas, which goes from the, um, the femur, so the inside of the femur here, all the way up through the pelvis and onto the spine. Now, a lot of people don't associate this muscle that needs lengthening because we are flexing the hip. But what you don't necessarily see is how much length has to be increased because what we're doing is the psoas is, um, is in a straight line effectively from here to here. But what we're now doing is we're now creating a corner of it. So if you can imagine, we've got a straight line, but what we then need to do, this straight line needs to be elongated so it can now go around a 90 degree corner. So it's not just going from point A to point B, it's going point A to B and then up to C. And that's where the extra length needs to come in. So the psoas is a sort of, a, it's a bit of a forgotten exercise because it's a hip flexor. Well, we're flexing the hip, that muscle must be shortening. It's not exactly um, true. It needs to have good length to it to be able to create that sort of that corner so we don't then round the spine. So again, just going into a very simple psoas stretch, we would come down onto one knee, try and keep good length, uh, sorry, not good length, a straight line through here, but then lifting the arm, possibly a bit of rotation, just to get a bit of extra length through the psoas, and then going back into the single, uh, single leg RDL, retesting it, and you will find that you will have much more um, a range of movement to it. So to summarize how you get, or what mobility you need to improve the single leg RDL. First of all, the hamstrings. Second of all, the adductors. Third, posterior fibers glute medius. And then the fourth is the psoas. So they're the four sort of muscles or areas of the body to focus on. And then what you can start to do is retesting it and then building in that extra range of movement. If you found this content interesting, please do hit the like button below. It will help me with the algorithm and keep this uh, tutorial in front of people. Number two, hit the subscribe button. Get notified when I uh, release new tutorials. And number three, leave any comments and questions below about anything that I've talked about in this tutorial and I'll do best to get them answered.